Hello, I'm Josh Averett and I'm the lead applications engineer for USB-C and USB power delivery products in the USB and networking group here at Microchip. I'd like to talk to you about USB-C and USB power delivery. Before USB-C and power delivery, docking to your workspace involved many cluttered cables and multiple power adapters. While we can eliminate some of these cables with wireless connections, our needs for instant data, fast charging, and high definition video remain wired. In August 2014, Microchip and over 30 member companies of the USBIF reached a milestone in their collaboration upon the USB-C and power delivery specifications and released this revolutionary standard to the world. USB-C defines the sleek and reversible connector and 15 watt charger and charger detection capability, while the power delivery option defines how to negotiate transfer of power and reconfigure the USB-C data connections. The combination of these technologies yields a single cable providing super speed data, up to 100 watts of power, and native video transmission. The USB connector is rotationally symmetrical with 24 pins which connect properly the first time, every time. For power, this connector includes four ground pins and four VBUS pins to support currents up to five amps. The connector also includes 14 data pins, eight positions for super speed differential data, four positions for USB 2.0 differential data, and two positions for single-ended data. For USB-C configuration and active cable power, the connector includes two configuration channel, or CC pins. Depending on the orientation of the plug, one of the CC pins is used for configuration and power delivery protocol, while the other is assigned to be a one watt power pin for active USB-C cables and accessories. Some of the data pins are reconfigurable, and this is where USB-C really gets interesting. When a product with a USB-C port also uses power delivery protocol, it can support what we call alternate modes. It is these alternate modes which enable the reassignment of four sets of super speed differential data pins and two single-ended data pins. Some of the alternate modes support on USB-C you've already heard of, like Thunderbolt and DisplayPort. Let's take a closer look at a solution that combines all the features of USB-C. Here I have a modern USB-C and USB power delivery enabled workspace I can dock to. This DisplayPort monitor is acting as my docking station because it is always connected to AC mains power and can convert that power into useful voltages for USB products and naturally takes advantage of the DisplayPort alternate mode on USB-C. And when I connect to my notebook with the single connection, in the blink of an eye, my connectivity from the notebook is expanded through the monitor and the monitor is providing charging power back to my notebook. But there's more to it than that. Let's look at some of those details. Upon first connection, the monitor provides standard 5 volt VBUS because this is the safe and backward compatible voltage for existing USB products. The notebook makes a formal request to have a 5 volt power contract in place because this is a formality to establish the fact that both devices on this cable are USB power delivery enabled. Now, because the monitor started as the 5 volt VBUS source in this connection, it is also acting as the default USB host of course, monitors aren't USB hosts, and we want to expand the connectivity from the notebook to the monitor. So the notebook issues a data roll swap request, which upon the monitor accepting that request, the USB 2.0 and USB 3.1 connections are made. With the notebook as the bus master, it can issue what we call discovery messages in order to determine what alternate modes may be available for this connection. The monitor replies with its DisplayPort capabilities and the notebook then configures the monitor and commands the monitor to enter the DisplayPort alternate mode. In this way, the USB-C connection has been reconfigured to carry both DisplayPort native data in tandem with the USB data. Once the data connections have been reconfigured, the notebook then requests its final high voltage power contract from the monitor. This notebook needs 14.8 volts, so it makes this request from the monitor. Upon accepting, the monitor then transitions the 5 volt VBUS to 14.8 volt VBUS, and the docking sequence is completed. This kind of USB solution, where both the data and power type and direction can be dynamically reconfigured, is only made possible thanks to USB C using the extended capabilities of the USB power delivery protocol. And because this standard is openly available through the USB implementers form, any vendor can access and implement these standards. For example, I have a completely different notebook here. And I will have the same exact docking experience with this notebook and this monitor, thanks to both vendors implementing this open standard. Indeed, 
Universal USB solutions are made possible thanks to these new USB technologies. Certainly in mainstream computing products, it may be obvious how a design may take advantage of 100 watts of power and display port. But what if you just want to use the new USB-C connection in a less demanding design? That's no problem. Remember what I mentioned earlier, the USB power delivery features are optional. In September 2015, Microchip introduced the UTC2000 USB-C port controller to enable low-cost and low-risk USB-C designs. With UTC2000, designers can easily add in USB-C support with up to 15 watts of VBUS power availability. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you would like more information on USB-C products, please contact our sales office or visit microchip.com slash USB-C.